It's a little touchy, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. okay, so P of X plus Q of X is what I care about, but I need to know if it's in S. How do I know if this is in S or not? It's got to satisfy this condition. Constant term plus X squared term minus three times the X cubed term must be equal to zero. Let's check that about this polynomial now. Okay, so note that if we take the constant term, the constant term is a1 plus a2 plus the x squared term, which is c1 plus c2, and then minus three times the x cubed term. We want that to equal zero. Notice I said that we want that to equal zero. Don't write equal zero yet. That's fulfilling your self-fulfilling prophecy, right? We want it to equal zero, but we need to derive that it is in fact equal to zero. So can somebody tell me how am I going to show, maybe after a few steps, that this is zero? Very good. We have we have some conditions that we already know about. This is exactly right. I'm going to put all of the one subscripts together and then all of the two subscripts together. So I'm going to reorganize this. I'm going to put the a1 and the c1 and the minus 3d1 together. And I'm also going to put parentheses around the a2, the c2, and the minus 3d2. Okay. And well, now we're good, in good shape because this is zero plus zero, which is zero. Okay, so thus P of X plus Q of X is an element of S. You've got to make sure to not drop the ball at the end, right? This is this is where you're getting your conclusion. And you, this is really not optional here. We need to say that at the end of the proof. Okay. People okay with this part? So we take two individual polynomials, we write down these conditions, we add the polynomials together, and then we check that same condition about the new polynomial. I see sometimes people will do these problems without ever mentioning this part. They'll just take, here's the P, here's the P of X, here's the Q of X, they add them together, they put element of S, and they stop. And that's great for showing that P3 of R is closed under addition. But I want to show that S is closed under addition, and S involves this condition here. So I have to see this as part of my work. OK, great. Uh, what else do I need to do? The scalar multiplication. Exactly. So closure under scalar multiplication. Um, so how do we start that off? OK, let P of x be as above. Exactly, so P of X is above, and then K is an element of the real numbers. I usually like to use K for my scalar on this part. And um, what we want to do is look at K times P of X. So let's just write out what it is, first of all. K times P of X is literally just KA1 plus KA2X. I'm sorry, KB1. All right, so KA1 plus KB1X plus KC1X squared plus KD1X cubed. Okay, so we just write that down first. And I want to say that it's an element of S. This is the goal, right? The goal is to say that this is an element of S, but if I write that right now, I'm going too fast. I'm jumping the gun to what I want. I need to convince myself that this really is an element of S, and I can only do that by verifying the condition for S right here. So I'm going to make another little calculation. I'm going to note that if I take the constant term, which is Ka1, and I add the x squared term, which is Kc1, and I subtract 3 times the x cubed term, which is 3kd1, I'm going to try to convince myself that that equals 0. Let's not write equals zero yet. I want to derive that that's equal to zero. So what would you suggest I do first? 
Does everybody see that? There's a K in each term. You definitely want to pull it out. So we pull out the K, we get A1 plus C1 minus 3D1. And that's just K times 0, which is 0, which is great. That's what we wanted. So now we can say thus K times P of X is an element of S. So we've got closure under addition and closure under scalar multiplication. Clear enough? Okay, great. Now there's a there's a part B. <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead, Brandon. So could we have uh, also just said uh, that a plus c minus three d equals zero? That that's a uh, uh, you, you turn, turn that into a matrix and just say it's the null space of one, one, negative three. Would that be good yeah, enough? That would not because because. Although this equation can be framed in a matrix as, as like a one by four matrix, I guess it would be, um, that's not what my vectors look like. My vectors are not in R4, right? My vectors consist of polynomials in P3 of R. So the only time that you're able to sort of say, look, S is equal to the null. Remember, um, if I am saying that S is equal to the null space of some matrix, then that means that this that means that S is a subspace of R n. You might remember from my handout, if A is an M by N matrix, the, the null space of such a matrix is a subspace of R n. And that is not what this S is a subspace of, right? This is a subspace of a different type of vector space. There is a connection. There, there is a connection there. You might be expecting that there would be. It's not something that I, I want to get into the day before the final. Um, it's, it's really more of a math 307 level connection. So I'm going to save that for somebody else to explain. Maybe it'll be me. They keep changing what I'm teaching next semester, so <laughs> who knows. But anyway, that's a, that's a connection that is probably best left alone for right now. Okay, um, there is a part B to this question though. Once you have a subspace, you tell me, what am I gonna ask you in part B? Find a basis, find a basis and find a dimension for S, right? <laughs> exactly, so find a basis and a dimension for S. That's gonna be it, okay? Does anyone have a, uh, an idea how I'm going to do that? Sorry, go ahead. You want to do it? I don't care. Whoever's feeling what you're doing. Can rewrite uh, the polynomial with like a satisfying Okay, guys, whenever you're trying to find a basis for a set, what you need to do is figure out what is the form of the vectors that you're describing. If I ask you for a basis for the two by two matrices that have entries that add up to zero, what you need to do is figure out what that form is, right? Figure out what the form is, something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? So if I have two by two matrices, this was a homework problem. Two by two matrices that have the four entries adding up to zero, three of them are free, and the last entry has to cancel out the other three. So you write this form down, and then you bust out the variables. And of course, there's three of them here. You have to write the form of the vectors. This is so critical that everybody's able to do this. We have to write the form of the vectors. So, now, P of X looks like this, A plus BX plus CX squared plus DX cubed. You could argue, well, is that the form? Is this already the form that we need? If I was just looking at a random polynomial in P3 of R, I would say yes. For P3 of R, this would be the form, and when I bust out the variables from this form, I would get a one, an x, an x squared, and an x cubed. This is busting the variables out of this. And you'll notice I have four vectors here, and this would be a basis 
but not for S. I see so many times people try to give this as the answer. This is the basis for P3 of R. I have completely ignored this condition so far, right? So if I really want to do this correctly, I have to write my form incorporating that. And the way to do it is to, is to say, look, in this equation, would you guys agree I have three free variables? B is free, C is free, and D is free. The only variable that's not free is A. A must make the rest of the equation cancel out to zero, right? So the A is not free. So what I can do is I can replace what A is equal to. A is equal to 3D minus C. And then the rest of the variables, the 